Welcome to our Seller Mail walkthrough training video. This is a detailed walkthrough of the basic steps needed to set up a sequence of emails for a product or a series of products. If you haven't done so already, log into your Manage by Stats account and go to the Seller Mail tab. From our earlier Seller Mail overview video, you should have already created a Seller Mail profile, but if you haven't, we'll walk you through the steps here. If you have, you can skip ahead in the video to the time indicated here. First, a profile is a vital part of getting your seller mail system set up professionally. Creating a profile for your brand or a profile for each of your brands allows you to have your emails show up for the customer as coming from that specific brand instead of just an Amazon seller cloaked email address. It also allows you to upload a logo to use in your emails and ensures that the messages from seller mail are able to go to and out from your Amazon Seller Central account automatically. To get started, click on the Profiles tab, click the plus button, and enter the following information. Sender name. Whatever is in this field is what your customers will see the email coming from. Usually, this would be your brand name or company name. Send from email. This needs to be an email that is registered with your Amazon Seller Central account, either the one used to sign into your Seller Central or another email that you have granted permissions to from within your Seller Central account. Logo file. Here is where you can upload a logo for your brand to go along with the emails for that brand. Test sample email address. This is the email you want test emails to go to. Usually this would be the email you use most often so you can see when the test emails are triggered. An important reminder, the send from email must be an email which is an approved sender in your Amazon Seller Central. Do not add or use a send from email that is not an approved email sender in your Amazon Seller Central. Once done creating your profile, click Add. Now, click on the Rules tab. Here is where you'll create the messages and the appropriate rules for your products. Click the plus button. For this walkthrough, we'll use one of our templates. At the top, you will see a drop-down window with all of the pre-made templates we provide, which you can edit to your liking. Since a general three-step email sequence can have an infinite amount of variables, we'll use the following for this walkthrough. The first email will be sent once the product is shipped from Amazon. The second email will be sent one day after the product has been delivered. The third email will be sent one week after the product has been delivered. Clicking the drop-down window, you can see we categorize these for easy reference. We'll select one of the shipped templates. Starting from the top, we're going to leave it in test mode until we know we're done with our editing and we're happy with what it looks like. The message name is what will appear in your Rules tab for your reference. Here, we'll add a brand identifier so we know which products this message is for. The email subject is what the customer will see in their subject line. Let's walk through what we have here. First, a stable datum to remember is that all of our variables have a money symbol in front of them. You can see all available variables by clicking the Insert pull-down under the Email Body section. All variables will also work in the subject line. In the email subject line, you can see we have the variable to insert the customer's first name, and at the end we have the variable to insert the order ID for the purchase. In the middle, we have product name in parentheses. This is not a variable. If you wanted it to be dynamic, to be able to be used for multiple products, you could enter the product name variable as such. The email body has many features. Most of these you should be familiar with from normal word editing programs. Two key buttons we've added are Insert and Source. The Insert button is where all of our variables are located. You simply click the button, scroll to find the variable you want, click it, and it will insert that variable into the email body where the cursor is located. The source button changes the view of the email body so you can see all of the HTML source code being used to create the message. If you are familiar with HTML, you can make adjustments here as long as they comply with the allowed HTML and CSS restrictions from Amazon. To complete this email, we'll put in our name and brand here and then again down at the signature area. We want to include our logo, so placing the cursor here, we'll click on Insert, find the logo variable, and click on it. 
Next, we need to make sure we assign the email sender profile we created to this email, so the logo will upload and the email will come from the desired brand. The Rules section is where you'll apply your triggers to have the email go to customers of the desired products at the desired times. As we want this email to go to customers when the product is shipped, we don't need to change these first triggers as the template already has these set. We then want to make sure this email is going to customers who buy certain products. By clicking the Select SKUs button, it will give us a list of all the SKUs that our system sees correctly synced up. This is a vital point, as if you have a product that is not synced from Amazon to MBS and you try to include it in the seller mail message, the seller mail email will not save. We'll simply click the plus button for the brand we want, which shows us all the products in that brand. Then we'll select the products we want this email to go to. We don't need to exclude any products, so we'll not be using this second field. If we left the first field empty, it would include all of our products and we could then use this second field to exclude the one or two products we did not want it to go to. We have additional advanced triggers below, which are explained in detail in another training video. For this email, we're going to ignore these. The final section is Repeat Buyer. This too has its own training video going over all the details of its use, so we'll skip over this too. We'll then click Add, and this will save the email and add it to our list in the Rules tab. If you wanted to also have an attachment for your customers, you can add this to the message after the initial setup and save. The reason this is not available when first creating the message is our system checks the email before saving it to make sure it will trigger correctly. Edit the message by clicking on the pencil button, scrolling to the bottom, and you can see an option now appears to add an attachment. Now, let's create the second email in our sequence to trigger one day after the product is delivered. Again, we are going to use one of the Manage by Stats templates, but you can start from scratch or copy an existing message if you wanted. You will see the status is Test Mode, which is what we want for now. We'll add in the brand in front of the message name for our preference. The subject line is fine. Looking over the email body, the signature line is the only thing needing to change. The rest looks good, but can be edited to your liking. Again, we'll assign the correct email sender, and now we want the trigger rules to be one day after delivered, so we'll put a 1 in the days field. We'll need to assign the SKUs we want this email to trigger for. We'll skip over all these additional triggers and click Add. This takes us back to our Rules tab, and we can now see both of the test mode messages here. So let's create our third email triggering one week after delivered. We'll click on the plus button and choose one of the Manage by Stats templates again. We'll add the brand in front of the message name, then add the product name token in the subject line. Looking over the email body, we can see we just need to add our signature information. Then, we'll select the email sender for this brand. Now, under the trigger rules. As we want this to be one week after delivered, we can simply put seven days here. Then, select the SKUs we want, Skip over these additional triggers and click Add. We now have all three emails set up, all in test mode. Test mode messages will trigger once a customer purchases an SKU that is included in the message rules. This will send an email to the test email indicated in the email sender profile. These messages will show up as test messages in the Sent tab, so you can see what these will look like. You can also test emails immediately by using the Save and Send Test Sample Email button, which is made available when you edit a message after the initial setup and save. Clicking this pencil button will edit the message, then scroll down to the bottom and click here. This will then send a test message to the test email for the email sender selected. Note, the variable links are set up to connect to each customer's order ID, enabling the customer to click on the link in the email and be taken where you want them to go easily. If you click the Save and Send Test button, the email you receive will have a test order ID filled in, which will of course not go to the desired landing page as there is no real order ID in the link. If you have messages that are in test mode and you receive one that's triggered from a sale, you will then see all the details filled in for all the variables, the name, order ID, product name, etc., etc., which will all be linked to that person's order.
Keep in mind that if you then click on one of these links with the customer order ID connected, you will, of course, not be able to see the correct landing page that the customer would be able to see as you did not purchase the product and the order ID does not connect to your Amazon account. The customer would be able to click these links and be taken to the exact page you wanted them to go to. Here, you can see an example of a save and send test message. Looking this over, we can see that the variables are working and our logo is uploading correctly. So, we can then go back and edit each message, changing the status from test to active, which will then stop the test emails going out to our test mode email, and it will start sending emails to customers who order after the email has been made active. And that covers our detailed walkthrough of setting up message rules in SellerMail. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video.